Hey everybody, this is going to be another maintenance video regarding my Jeep Grand Cherokee. So anyways, um, the last video I posted was regarding the, um, the cooling system. I've been having issues with it leaking from the thermostat outlet, you know, the, the water outlet up here. I got that fixed by um, swapping out the aftermarket housing with an OEM one from a 98 Grand Cherokee 5.9. And it has not leaked since. But this is going to be about a different thing. Basically, for the past year or so, I have noticed under hard acceleration um, some pinging or spark knock. And a common cause of that would be oil getting itself into the um, intake. Now, these engines are really are commonly known for the plenum gasket to fail due to a design flaw. This aluminum kegger style um, intake manifold has uh, from the factory a steel plenum plate on it and over time you know as, as different metals have different um, heat characteristics they expand and contract differently um, what happens over time is the steel plate warps and causes the gasket to fail and it allows oil to get sucked in to the intake under the vacuum of the engine Basically, when your engine's idling, you know, your, 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 um, the butterfly is practically closed, there's a high amount of vacuum, and it can suck in oil through that failed gasket. But I, um, this is earlier this year or last year, I popped, yeah, it was this year because I already had this. Um, I popped, you know, this off the top and opened the, the um, opened up the throttle and looked in, shined the flashlight in. I didn't see any puddles of oil or anything. It was a common sign that you would have if the um, plenum gasket had failed. Um, now basically, I'm not exactly certain on the history of this motor. I do know, um, or at least what the person told us when we got this thing in 2011, was that this thing had an engine replaced at 80,000 miles. And there is a dealer sticker on the PC, on the, on the, I'm sorry, the ECM regarding a authorized software update that was completed um, January, I'm sorry, February 23rd of 1998. Now, I'm not sure if that was, um, not sure this thing had 80,000 miles on it at that time, but um, supposedly this motor was replaced at 80,000 miles, and the whole vehicle has about 260,000 miles on it now. Um, the Tranny was rebuilt not long after it was bought in 2011. At that point, it had like 220,000 miles on it. The motor does seem like it doesn't have too many miles on it. I mean, it's it runs. It's always had lots of power, ran like a champ. It does lose a little bit of oil. Um, I think the rear main seal does have a little bit of a leak. Um, it doesn't lose it at a, at a terribly high amount, but I've noticed um, the smell of burning oil when this thing sits idle after it's been heated up. And if you look carefully, you see all that black stuff down in there? That is oil accumulation. So anyways, this motor uses a PCV um, crankcase ventilation system. Positive um, crankcase ventilation. It all starts right behind your air filter. This line hooks up and the vacuum you know, draws air through it, you know, through here. And there is an extra filter right here on the driver's side valve cover. So ventilation begins there. And if we go to the passenger side, on this side, you have what's called the um, PCV valve. Or more or less this guy. It just, it just simply sits on top of the valve cover here and you have a line that comes from that to your intake manifold past the butterfly to draw um, basically what this is an emission system it draws um, crankcase um, fumes to be burned again rather than ventilate them to the atmosphere and there's a little valve it's called a PCV valve it's like a little check valve um, it does a couple of things it, it regulates um, you know when the amount of vacuum is high. It res it helps to restrict the airflow. You know, from, this is this is from rail line. I'm not totally mechanic here, so it um it restricts airflow when it's um, idling. Now, when you accelerate, um, the vacuum goes down, and then this thing allows more um, air to flow through. 
and also what it does is it prevents um, air from flowing from flowing backwards so let's say if the pressure inside your intake manifold is higher than the crankcase it prevents that pressure from going back into the crankcase and these things can fail uh, one or two ways they can fail stuck closed which in that case what would happen is it would cause the crankcase pressures to build up and can, and can cause your engine to have excessive oil leaks perhaps that may have happened in the past with this engine I don't I don't know for sure because um, it does it does lose a little bit of oil um, but not at a terribly high rate the other way it can fail is stuck open so when you know there's lots of vacuum it's sucking a lot of <laughs> sucking a lot of air through the young through the crankcase and when you have a high amount of vacuum it's like a vacuum cleaner it can suck up oil as well and that is exactly what's happening here you can see all the oil because what's happening is um, you can look at the inside of that um, of that tube there it, it is just filthy and you can see on all along the side of this engine here between the valve cover and the manifold it's just a freaking mess and believe me it's it does smell sometimes when it's when it's hot <laughs> yeah that that oil accumulating there just it doesn't smell too doesn't smell too good so um, you know I was doing some research online the other day and I um, figured hey maybe the PCV valve is what's causing this oil to get sucked into the intake and cause it to spark knock and whatnot and you can see all this accumulation here this is uh, this is too obvious of a sign you know when I found out the information online I thought for sure the PCV valve had failed open sure enough this is the new one and you can see how there's a spring that is holding that little valve up toward the top and if you actually blow on it it does not it it restricts you know tries to prevent air from flowing backwards whereas this one you can see how the the valve is like sitting down in the bottom if I flip it this way it uh, falls down to you know it falls down to the edge there but if I flip it upside down it just falls back this PCV valve has failed because I can blow on it I can blow through this hose it does it does toward it does tend to close up but um, you know at the same time it's not like this one here um, as the spring has failed it's just allowing it's, it's not restricting vacuum being pulled by the intake manifold so that's an obvious problem you can see um, was well, it's obvious as you saw over here you know all that mess that's down in there <laughs> I'm gonna try to clean some of that up too but yeah um, it's kind of obvious what was happening here this thing is sucking oil through the PCD valve that wasn't restricting flow when it's under extreme vacuum thus allowing oil to get into the um, intake and causing it to burn oil and of course with that comes you know the spark knock and things like that and this is like a three dollar something part at AutoZone now from what I read online some people were saying perhaps you should go with the OEM part with this kind of thing um, you know I said it's going to pick this up it is in fact made in USA I think it's actually a Fram um, PCV valve. It was, of course, dura lasted by AutoZone, but um, <laughs> um, I saw one just like this online. I think the number is exactly the same. Made in USA 2279, and it was a Fram part. So, might be something to think about if you're if your 52 is or 59 or 3.9 V6 is is burning oil. Maybe it's maybe it's not necessarily the um, plenum gasket failing it may be something like this so I figured I'll just go ahead and share this with you guys hopefully help somebody out okay everybody quick little video update before I slap this all together and post it to YouTube Jeep seems to be doing okay now with that um, replacement PCV valve installed I've noticed the oil smell has gone down significantly 
Somebody just slammed on their brakes. Perhaps a deer run out in the road. Anyways, um, as I was mentioning, um, it doesn't seem to smell so much like oil anymore. And I, I don't know for sure if the pinging has stopped. It may take a little bit of while, you know, to really know for sure. But it hasn't, it hasn't pinged at all since I've changed the valve. Though I haven't really had to get on it that much. I did get on it one time, but it was very briefly. It didn't ping at all then. But yeah, um, you know, PCV valve, it went on pretty easily. Um, so anyways, um, if you're, um, if you're 5.2 liter, 5.9 liter V8s, or you're a 3.9 liter V6 in a Dodge, or, you know, in this case, a Jeep Grand Cherokee, is um, consuming a little bit of oil, maybe slightly less than a quart a month, um, depending on how much you drive it. You're noticing a little bit of spark knock under hard acceleration, and you've looked inside the throttle body, you know, looked down inside the throttle body toward the plenum, and hadn't seen a bunch of oil residue. You know, it may not actually be the um, plenum gasket failing. You know, it is common on these motors for the plenum gasket to fail, but, you know, before you invest all the time in taking that intake manifold off to find out, um, perhaps you should try changing out your PCV valve. I mean, as I mentioned, it's it was like less than $5. I think it's like $3 or something. And from what I looked up online, it's actually a Fram, the one I bought that was Duralasted branded by them. Um, all it is on is actually made by Fram. And as I mentioned, it's it's doing this fine. So, you know, as I mentioned before you before you um, invest all the time in, you know, draining the antifreeze out, pulling the um in you know, pulling the intake manifold off and all that stuff. Change out your PCV valve. It may be it may be the culprit. Hopefully this is helpful for you guys. And thanks for watching.